Set naked and you bought an because Danny, Elu Ada Shaman will less. We all at some point in time feel at, that we need to make a change in our lives. Um, whether that be a, a, a new car, a new job, or even a new haircut. For me, the change in my life brought me to Hungary. Um, as with all great stories, mine begins on a Saturday night with a trip to the pub. Or I should really say, our story. Um, my then fiancé and now wife were discussing how life had become a fairly typical and dull parade of the same things day after day. And I'm pretty sure the story in Hungary is fairly similar to the one in most of the rest of Europe. You begin at home, um, and then after three or four years, you go to school. Yes, it's, sorry, I've lost my place. You begin at home and then maybe a little preschool and then you go to school and then college and maybe even university. And during those 21, 22 years of your life, one of the most common questions you're asked is what do you want to be when you grow up? You start off wanting to be something exciting like a, an astronaut or a fireman or a policeman. Uh, and then as time progresses, you end up being more pragmatic and, and your hopes and dreams become, let's face it, more dull. Uh, as a matter of fact, I ended up being a, a commercial property manager, uh, a job that I enjoyed greatly. However, one that was interminably built and not one that you really want to discuss. Then you begin work. You start climbing the slippery pole of the modern workplace. Um, you buy your first car, you buy your first house, and maybe you get married. You possibly have children, and then you want a, a bigger car and a bigger house, so then you need a, a promotion and more money that goes along with that promotion. And then after 45 years of work, then maybe you can retire, and your time once again becomes yours to do with as you wish. We decided to try and turn that idea upside down and reclaim our time for ourselves at a much younger age than people normally do. Um, naturally, we've had to make a host of sacrifices and our Hungarian adventure is one built on a shifting appreciation of time and a thousand lessons that we would never have learned if we hadn't have come to Hungary. We had a beer fueled conversation sometime in June 2007, and in the coming days, we became increasingly in interested in purchasing a, a holiday home. And that idea then blossomed into purchasing a, a summer house to stay in over summer. And that idea then blossomed for some strange reason into, into buying a, a house with a piece of land and doing something completely different altogether with our lives. Um, at that point in time, we'd already booked to go to the Siget Festival um, in Budapest in August 2007. So we had a brief look at properties on the internet. Uh, and decided to contact an agent and, and have a look around. We met the agent in a small town called Dorma, just off the M3 motorway on the Great Hungarian Plain, and he drove us uh, around the region, showing us countless properties. And we returned to, to Budapest that evening, uh, stayed in our tent at the Siget Festival, and never really discussed the properties that we'd seen or the ideas that we had. And it, as a matter of fact, we didn't actually discuss it at all during the rest of our stay at the Siget Festival. It was only when we returned to the UK that we had a conversation and it was obvious that we both fallen not just for the same house, but for the same idea. So much so that we contacted the agent shortly after and arranged to buy our new home. In fact, we returned in October to buy our house. In the eight months and 15 days that followed, we managed to squeeze in, getting married, selling our house, quitting our jobs, and throwing countless leaving parties. Um, and we even tried to learn a basic grasp of the Hungarian language, not that that worked out too well. Um, and whilst my particular story is set uh, against the backdrop of an English couple from a big city moving to a rural Hungary, our motivation for relocating is, is no different to anybody else's reason for leaving their country of birth and heading for passages new. The only difference is how we define a better life for us. There are typically five reasons behind migration. 
uh, financial security, uh, a better standard of living, education, political instability, and love. Naturally, the list isn't exclusive, and it's not particularly in any order, but I can place our key motivation for moving into just one of these categories, and that's standard of living. Uh, many people, both English and Hungarian, think that we are slightly strange when we say that we're moving to Hungary for a better standard of living. In many ways, I can understand the confusion. We both had good financially secure jobs. Uh, we had a nice home, a vibrant social life, uh, a wonderful circle of family and friends, and lived in a, a vibrant multicultural city with lots of things to do. And we're planning to move to Hungary. Uh, and let's face it, your average Englishman knows very little about Hungary. Actually, he knows nothing about Hungary. Uh, he may know that uh, Budapest is the capital city, and given that most English people, many English people are fanatical about football, they may have heard of Ferenc Puskás, uh, Budapest Hollandair, maybe even Debrecen EFC. I'm sure everyone in, in the UK has heard of the Rubik's Cube and the Biro Pen, but nobody really associates them with Hungary. And as far as most English people are concerned, paprika, I have to say, is associated with Spain and Portugal and not Hungary. Um, and oddly enough, goulash is pronounced goulash, and it's a thick stew more akin to a pork rather than a goulash. And if I'm honest, when we started our adventure, we knew very little more. In short, we had the sort of life that many people move across Europe to the UK, France, or Germany dream of. So if we had seemingly great lives that were engaging and financially secure, why on earth did we move to Hungary for a better standard of life? The time, the answer is really simple, time. Now time may seem like an odd reason to relocate to an, another country, but we rapidly found ourselves in a position where we had little influence on our free time. Just like everyone else, we have 168 hours in our week. But for some strange reason, those 168 hours were never enough. We were constantly juggling what felt to be an ever-decreasing amount of free time. Work days began with an alarm at 6 a.m. in the morning. And by the time we returned from the office uh, and had eaten, it was quite often 8 p.m. in the evening. Um, the weekend just seemed to disappear. Before you knew it, you'd be back at Monday again. It's a, it's a very common story that we see week in, week out when we converse with our friends on Facebook. The, the celebration of the arrival of Friday and then the commiseration of the arrival of Monday, asking where the hell the weekend went. Um, since we moved to Hungary, our notion of time has completely changed. In fact, time isn't important to us anymore. Um, we have to set a weekly alarm to tell us it's Thursday to put our refuse bins out, which would never happen in the UK. Um, Having freed up our time, something that we never considered to be important became much more prevalent in our lives. That's space. Both myself and my wife were born in big cities and towns, and uh, before we moved over, we lived in a, a large city called Birmingham with a population of a little over a million people, which was part of a larger conurbation called the West Midlands with a population of 2.4 million. In fact, our house is on this screen. Somewhere in there. The resolution's a little low. <laughs> um, it's a fairly typical suburban house. Two stories, three bedrooms, sitting on a plot of just 180 square metres. And if we zoom out a little, you can see just how many people lived in the same area as us. Um, in all fairness, it, population density is probably fairly similar to that of Budapest, but we weren't moving to Budapest, we were moving to the countryside. If we take a quick look at the village that we now live in, that's taken it at exactly the same level as the previous image. The space is huge and it's all around you. In short, we used to live in a place where quiet and solitude did not exist. And to be honest, we were a little bit worried about moving from a big, vibrant city to a very small, rural, isolated village. It's only now when we wander around our small rural home that we realise the isolation that was caused by living in a fast-moving and incredibly busy city. Although we passed thousands of people every day, we never greeted them or spoke to them. We were like robots passing from one moment to the next, navigating from one location to another without really noticing what was going on around us, unless it had a direct impact on our life. 
how it's difficult to leave our home without becoming involved in a conversation with one of our village's 200 inhabitants. If I was to walk in a pub in the UK to meet my friends and I was early, I'd sit in the corner and read a newspaper or play with my phone. In our local pub, if you walk in, you have to shake everybody's hands and greet everybody before you're even allowed to buy a drink. So what do we now do with our newfound time, space and freedom? The principal answer is food and drink. Uh, rather than doing a monthly or fortnightly shop in a, a huge faceless supermarket, as we used to do in the UK, we now pretty much grow and eat everything. Well, we, we now pretty much grow everything that we eat in our own garden. And the 150, 200 litres of wine we brew is a welcome addition over winter as well. Um, time for us has become very much cyclical, much the way as it used to be in years gone by. Our working patterns are now governed by the weather and the seasons, and not arbitrary markings on a clock or the demands of a customer or an employer. And our achievements now seem strangely tangible. The food on the table that we eat is the product of hard work and effort and planning, rather than a result of tapping away at a keyboard to earn enough money to tap away on another keyboard to order food to be delivered to your house. For us, at least, the relative financial prosperity and security that many chasing far away land was not the key to our happiness. For us, it was two and a half acres of land in a village with a population of about 200 people who, despite the language problems, have welcomed us into their community and given us a new home and not just a new house. Merci. Thank you.